Beautiful. So welcome, beautiful ladies, to this webinar about sleep hygiene. So as I mentioned, I, uh, I got certified as a sleep science coach last year, 2020. And since I've been passionate about this uh, topic, because I find not so many people out there is aware of how important it is to have healthy sleeping habits and why, why should we actually um, have a proper uh, sleep, okay? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna discover the power of a good night sleep. Now, the reason why I bring this to your attention is because I feel if you know exactly how sleep works and if you know the benefits it brings you, you might be uh, motivated to prioritize your sleep. So first things first, we have to understand that we have a, a body clock, an internal, an internal clock, okay? So have you ever wondered how come we feel sleepy at night and we feel awake during the day? That is if everything is normal with us. I mean, what makes us sleep at night and what makes, it, makes us wake up during the day? What is it? Have you ever wondered back in the day how, uh, how, how did our ancestors live? Did they have an alarm clock? Did they have to go to work? Um, how, why were they sleeping at night and why they were, were they waking up during the day? How much light did they have? Because there is something super interesting. It's that they, as we do, they would go to bed at night. They would wake up with the sun. Okay, so that itself, um, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a clue, right? It's okay, maybe the light has something to do with this. And then back in the day, they didn't have computers or TVs or even electrical lights, or, you know, when you look at the window, you, you see all these lights, none of that was there. So for them, it was something that was telling them when to go to bed and when to wake up. And this something was basically the light, okay? So the light is what's gonna tell us, it's what's gonna activate our clock. And this clock, it's gonna activate our body. So what happens when we see sunlight through our eyes, okay? I'm not gonna go super technical, but it's, it's, it's fairly simple. You see sunlight through the lights. There are um, some, it, there is a protein in the retina that is gonna activate, um, the super, super chiasmatic nucleus. It's a really, really, really weird name. And that's gonna activate our internal clock. So once it gets activated, this is the signal for us to be active. It's like, okay, it's daylight, active, yay. Let's do stuff, let's go to work. Let's, have a, let's do a workout, let's walk. Then eventually, you know, day goes, the day goes by, it's night, it's dark. We secrete melatonin. I, I don't know if you've heard about this. You can, you know, sometimes when, when you have trouble sleeping, they're going to go recommend the uh, melatonin. Um, and then you go to bed. And then the cycle starts again. So it's all about the light. Okay. Um, that's why um, I'll talk about it a little bit later. But if you're having trouble sleeping, try to play with the lights. Try to, um, as soon as you wake up, if there is sunlight, try to look at the sun, just step outside or, or put your head out the window and try to have some sunlight get into you. And then at night, try to reduce the amount of light in your home. Okay, we're gonna talk about it later, but just so you know, it's super, super important. Now, this is called circadian rhythm. Circadian means, uh, it comes from circa, um, it's a circadian, it's around a day. So it's a 24 hour clock that gives us signals about when to sleep and when to be awake, all right? So this uh, clock, it's, or our body, it's gonna send us signal. It's gonna tell us, listen, you're tired, go to bed. And then it's gonna tell us, okay, go, let's go to work. You can be active now. The problem is that sometimes we're not listening. Okay, sometimes we are tired at night and we insist of watching the next episode on Netflix or we insist of 
checking the email one more time or we want to go to Facebook at 11 p.m. or go to TikTok or Instagram, we are not listening to our bodies, all right? So ideally when the sun sets, well, right now it's winter, so it's setting like super um, early, but let's say 8, 9 p.m., you should already be closing your screens, turning off the lights and starting to slowly um, be ready for bed. But we'll talk about it a little bit later. Now, are you getting enough sleep? You have uh, heard me say that I recommend at least seven hours. I would say between seven and eight. Um, and according to Health Canada, they say seven to nine. I have never been able to sleep nine hours unless I'm super tired. But you know, if you are able to do that, go for it. Um, so if you are between the ages of 18 and 64, you should sleep between seven to nine hours. And if you're older than 65, seven to eight. However, one in every four adults aged 18 to 34, one in every three aged 35 to 64, and one in every four aged 65 to 79 are not getting enough sleep. And I was the first to say that I was okay with five hours and a half. This was me like two years ago, okay? I would be like, ah, no, six hours stops. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of person. But no, I am not. So if you think you are, we have to check, okay? Now, what happens when you're not getting enough sleep? Why am I talking about this? Why am I so passionate about this subject? Um, the risks, well, there are several, but these are the ones that have an impact more direct in our lives. You have lack of energy, decreased focus, poor judgment, poor reaction time, and weight gain. And this, I am going to show you a statistic. I found that it, it's really, um, it's funny, but it's true. Sorry, it's this. There was a study that was done in 2017 that proved that when sleep deprived couples argue, they are more irrational or they perceive the other person to be more irrational. So imagine if you have two people living under the same roof and they're both sleep deprived and they are arguing about something super silly, like, I don't know, I, you didn't do the dishes last night. And it becomes a huge fight. And it might be only because both are so tired because they're not sleeping. It's so like, you know, sleeping is something we neglect, but it's something we actually have to pay attention to. Now, if we want to take this to another level, I don't know if you have heard about uh, Chernobyl or Exxon Valdez. Chernobyl was a nuclear accident in 1986 in Ukraine. And Exxon Valdez was a, uh, an oil spill in 1989 in Alaska. And the reason I'm bringing this up, it's because both of these accidents, they, they were very serious accidents. They were caused by sleep deprivation, which means the person responsible or the person who caused the accident was sleep deprived. So his reaction time was poor, he had poor judgment, and you know, this happened, all right? Now, weight gain. So how come um, I am saying, um, well, if you don't get enough sleep, you might gain weight. So gain weight, sorry. Before we get into that, let me talk to you about these two hormones right here. We call them the hunger hormones. Um, one of them is called leptin. The other one is called ghrelin. And we call them the hunger hormones because those, these are the ones who send the signal to your brain as to, well, I'm full or no, I'm hungry, okay? So let's say when you eat, you're gonna secrete leptin and this uh, hormone, it's gonna signal to the brain that it's, it's okay, I'm full, I'm good, I'm done. Then when time goes by, you're gonna start secreting ghrelin and ghrelin tells um, the brain, listen, I'm hungry, we need food, okay? So what happens when you're not getting uh, enough sleep, these two, they go out of balance and let me explain. So, 
let's say you are sleep deprived and you're not sleeping enough, then you're gonna have increased levels of ghrelin and decreased levels of leptin. And if you remember what I just said, ghrelin is the one that tells your brain that we're hungry and leptin is the one that tells your brain we're full. So what happens if you have increased levels of the hormone responsible for telling the brain that you're hungry? You're gonna have more, you're gonna be more hungry and you're gonna have more appetite, okay? So we're gonna, you're gonna eat more, but it's not because you need it. It's because, it's just because there is a hormonal imbalance caused by sleep deprivation. And something else that happens when you're sleep deprived is the way you see food changes, okay? Why? Because you start seeing food as a reward and because you're going to have more appetite for high calorie food. So I don't know if you've ever been like super tired because you didn't sleep well last night and all you crave is like comfort food, like nachos, hamburger, pigs. And you're like, I don't know, I feel like I'm having, mm. and they have done studies about this. Um, they have uh, sleep deprived people and they have, you know, in a, in a, in a closed uh, controlled setting, they have like groups where like group sleep, sleeps the hours it has to sleep. And then one group doesn't sleep enough and they see what they crave and they crave high caloric food, um, food that they would not normally crave if they were sleeping their full hours. So please girls, sleep. Tick. Now reality check. The average Canadian, empl Canadian employee gets, gets less than six hours of sleep per night. One in three Canadians are chronically sleep deprived, including adolescents and children, which makes Canada the third most sleep deprived country on the planet. Mm -hmm. This is not good. Oops, what just happened? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I clicked. Wait, let me get back. All right, here we go. In 2016, lack of sleep was costing the Canadian economy around 21.4 billion US dollars per year, according to the research group called RAND Europe. And besides lost productivity, sleep deprivation has been linked to disease and accidents. So this is a really um, serious. They say that someone who sleeps less than six hours per night has a 13% higher mortality risk than someone who gets between seven and nine hours. And then we go, you know, some people, some people believe that they are okay. Let's say you went, went out partying and um, you're not drinking. You had five hours of sleep or four, but you're okay because you didn't drink, right? But no, drowsy, drowsy drivers may cause as many crashes as impaired drivers. And actually there is statistics that show that uh, fatigue is a factor in up to 21% of vehicle collisions, which results in about 400 deaths and 2,100 serious injuries every year. Okay, so this is just to create awareness. I don't know if you or maybe someone you know, they, they are tough, quote unquote, and they are like, yeah, I, I didn't sleep, I'm tired, but I can, I can pull it, I can drive to Toronto. Let's do it. So it's just to create awareness. It's better just to, you know, you know, move, like adjust your agenda so that you are sure you're well rested and you sleep before going behind the wheel. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the sleep cycle and I'm not going to go super deep here because it's, it's, it's too theoretic, but I do want you to have an idea. Okay. Um, when we sleep, we go through different stages and these stages, it's, they form a cycle that we're going to go over around six times per night. So the stages are one, two, three, four. Have you heard about REM? 
R.E.M. It's a it's a band. It's an American band. So for me, until like two years ago, R.E.M. was just a musical band, a rock band. But no, R.E.M. means um, rapid eye movement, and an sorry, and R.E.M. means non rapid eye movement. So stages one, two, and three are non R.E.M. And then stage four, it's REM sleep. We actually dream when we are in REM sleep. And the reason why it's called this way, it's because of course this has been studied. When you are in this stage, your eyes are gonna move side to side and you're dreaming. And something super cool that happens that I found out last year when I was doing my certification is that when you are in this stage, you are actually paralyzed. You cannot move. And the reason is your body is so amazing. It's protecting you to actually um, do whatever you're dreaming. You know what I mean? So let's say you're dreaming, you're fighting, you're, you're paralyzed. You cannot perform um, the act you are actually dreaming about, which is, I found super cool. So you see every stage has different durations. And when you go through the four stages, you complete one cycle. So in a typical night, a person goes through four to six sleep cycles and one full cycle uh, on average lasts around 90 minutes each. Now, every stage has a function. Um, so ideally when we're sleeping, we want to go through all stages, okay? Um, as I say here, failure to obtain enough enough of both deep sleep and REM sleep may explain some of the profound consequences of insufficient sleep on thinking, emotions, and physical health. Now, something else. When we're sleeping, I mean, what, what's going on? Like when you see it from the outside, when you see your husband, your boyfriend, or your mom, or your, your friend sleeping, you see someone laying there and you think, oh, look, so cute nothing is going on, she or he's just resting, right? But it's not like that. Sleeping, it's actually a super active state where there is a lot of things that go on internally. M memory cutting, tissue repair, energy restoration, disease prevention, all of these things are going on. Brain cleansing, I'm going to talk about this, but you have to imagine actually there are things that are being like wasted. Like, okay, it's like when you go and clean your kitchen, like the counter, like the exercise we did, you sent me a picture of your counter and most of you had to clean. <laughs> well, it happens the same with the brain. The brain gets cleaned every single night in order not to accumulate toxins. So sleeping resets our brain and our body as we transition from one stage to another during the sleep cycle. So I'm gonna go over each one of these. Memory encoding. So when we transition to sleep and we enter into deep sleep, our memories are encoded and consolidated. The brain decides what will be stored and while we, what will be eliminated. And actually they have done study, studies where they have people learning something, let's say, you know, a sequence of numbers or you know, something they read on a textbook. And again, they have two groups. So the first group, it's gonna be tested on what they learned a few minutes after they've learned it. And the second group is gonna be tested on what, they, on what they've learned after getting a good night's sleep. And the group that slept had better results, okay? And this is not me making, up, making it up. There are lots of students, studies up there. And if you want the source, I can, gladly give you the source. And I'm gonna recommend that book after for those who want to uh, look into this uh, further. Tissue repair. So imagine two things. Imagine when you're sick and when you were little that you're like, mom, I'm not feeling well. What was the first thing mom told us to do? Why don't you go get some sleep, baby? Maybe you'll feel better, right? Because when you're sleeping, you will recover. You, um, during deep, deep sleep, your body, it's gonna engage in tissue repair work, energy restoration. And also during sleep, your muscles are gonna rest and rebuild. So imagine you're working out super hard. 
you have to sleep, you have to rest because that's when actually you're gonna grow your muscles, all right? Disease prevention, like here I could go for hours, but I don't wanna talk about all that could happen um, disease wise when you are sleep deprived, but you know, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, Alzheimer, many chronic medical conditions can arise from not sleeping well, okay? Um, and as I said before, I could send you links for you to read more about this. I just don't want to make this super long, but yes, trust me, they are also studies that have proven that sleep deprivation can cause several um, diseases. And this is what I was mentioning about the cleaning, okay? So there is something called the glymphatic system, which is a system by which the brain is gonna keep toxins from building up. So it's gonna clean itself as you sleep, okay? If you lack sleep, these toxins are just gonna accumulate and you're gonna have consequences. And this is the example I said about the dirty kitchen. You don't want your brain looking like a dirty kitchen. Now there are four pillars of sleep. Depth or quality, which means, okay, maybe you're sleeping or maybe you are uh, spending eight hours a night in your bed, but are you actually getting a full night's sleep? Are you actually going through the four stages? Are you actually having enough cycles of sleep? Duration, are you sleeping five hours or nine? Continuity, are you waking up at night? Regularity, are you going to bed and waking up at the same time every day? So these four uh, metrics are the ones you need to look into whenever you are assessing whether you are having a good sleep or not. All of these four are equally important. So it's not that, yeah, well, I don't sleep very well. Like I don't, I don't dream and I don't go through the stages, but at least I'm getting nine hours. No, it should be, I'm getting my nine hours or eight hours. I'm not waking up during the night. I'm falling asleep and waking up at the same time every day. And I'm actually getting deep and super high quality sleep. So how can we achieve this? Have you heard about sleep hygiene? What is that? Well, it's very simple. These are habits that will help you have a good night's sleep. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. It's all about putting yourself in the best position to sleep well each and every night. So it starts by having a really nice environment, like a really nice bedroom and a ritual for when it's time to go to bed so that you get consistent and uninterrupted sleep. Now let's start with the bedroom. Something super important girls. I don't know if you have, do you have a TV in your bedroom? It's okay if you say yes, you shouldn't. Your bedroom, think about SS. There are only two things that are supposed to happen in your bedroom. Sex and sleep, double S, okay? So checking your phone in your bedroom, having your computer in your bedroom, watching TV in your bedroom, those are to be avoided. The only thing I do in my bedroom before sleeping is reading. It's part of my ritual and it helps me um, fall asleep. But I use, uh, uh, I dim the light. We're gonna talk about the light, but I dim the light so that it's, I'm not getting bright light uh, late at night, okay? Now, your bedroom should be dark, cool, quiet, peaceful, and comfortable. You should actually look at it as a sanctuary, okay? And every time you go in there, it's like, ah, you know? And I hadn't thought about it, but making your bed, making your bed, it's not only a really nice habit to start your day with a success, but it it's also helps you when you go back to your bedroom at night 
you're gonna get there and it's a beautiful space it's it's clean and it you you feel like being there imagine being tired and having a messy room with clothes here and the bed is old you know everything is all over the place and shoes everywhere and clothes no try to keep your bedroom tidy cool dark peaceful comfortable and quiet as much as possible now what else can we do besides uh, the bedroom ask yourself please how much coffee are you having per day? And when are you having your last cup of coffee? Are you having alcohol every day? And if you are, when are you having your last drink? When are you having your last meal? When are you working out? And how late are you using this? How late are you watching TV? How late are you using your phone? How late are you working or doing stuff in the computer? So caffeine, you should stop having coffee four to six hours before going to bed. And actually what I'm doing, I love coffee. I love coffee. Like I could not live without it. When I try to stop, every time I try to stop, I get headaches, bad mood. So I, I like, I can't. But what I'm doing is I'm not having coffee after 12.30 or 1 p.m. That's me, okay? Now, some people are more tolerant to coffee. Some people can have a really nice cup of coffee at 4 p.m. and they're gonna have a really good night's sleep. It changes with everybody, but I am suggesting four to six hours before going to bed, you stop your caffeine consumption. <laughs> Alcohol, <laughs> this sucks. Because it, I love having like red wine with dinner, right? However, alcohol, it's going to have consequences on your REM sleep. Now, if you are out one day or you're having a special dinner or it's, you know, San Valentine's Day or Christmas or New Year's or, you know, your birthday, it's okay. Just have your, have your wine and go to bed. What I want you to be aware of is that you should not get into the habit of always having your red wine after dinner or with dinner or having a beer um, every night because it's going to have an impact or on the quality of your sleep, okay? So if every once in a while you're having dinner with wine, it's okay. But if you are into having a beer every day, which I'm not, like, not going to oppose to, just try to have it with lunch and not with dinner. I know it's awkward, but it's the way it is. Eating, you should have your last meal at least three hours before going to bed. You don't wanna go to bed, bed with a full stomach. Exercise, two or three hours before going to bed. And all these lights and these screens, you should stop at least one hour before going to bed. Okay, and this brings me back to the light subject. Remember at the beginning, I was talking to you how important light is. So as, as I said, when you wake up, the light is what's gonna start the clock. So as soon as you start uh, uh, releasing melatonin, you want to dim the lights. You want to help your body, you know, melatonin is building up. So play with your environment to help your body fall asleep faster. So how can you play? Dim the lights, close the screens. Um, if you can, let's say I have a, I have a lamp here and I, I'm having it right now just because I'm doing this webinar, but this lamp, it's off. When I finish uh, teaching my classes, it's off because it's right in my face. And what it's doing, it's confusing my body. It's like, okay, it's dark out. I'm secreting melatonin, but you're giving me this light. Should I start the clock? Should I stop the clock? Like what's going on, all right? So play with the lights, help your body. Now, this is my challenge for you. If you check your emails, I sent you a habit sheet, which looks like this, okay? So what I want you to do, what I would love for you to do is track your habits and see how you're doing sleep-wise. So all you need to do is check. 
let's say today, if you want to start today, no caffeine within four hours of bedtime, check. No alcohol, check. No smoking if you smoke, check. I exercise two hours or more before bedtime, check, 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 check. All right. And if there is something else that you did that day, write it below. Okay. And just the point here is for you to realize if there is room for improvement. Maybe you're doing everything right and you're having an awesome night, but maybe your partner, your sister, your mom, your best friend, she tells you, listen, I don't know why I ha I'm having issues sleeping. Well, maybe you can help her send her this sheet and maybe we can figure out how to improve um, her quality of sleep, all right? And with that being said, as I said before in the last webinar, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. So what we're doing is building healthy habits. So we're gonna leave our whole old habits be behind. We're gonna build new habits and eventually you will become your habits, whether they're bad or good. Okay, yay. So I'm gonna stop the recording and uh, wait, let me see.